that are current. One is District 9. I don't know how many of you have seen that. Uh, and I classify another movie as science fiction because it, it is also alternate history, which is Inglorious Bastards. I don't know how many of you have seen that one, but it's a marvelous film. Uh, a film that you're talking about that are obscure, one I like was Quiet Earth, which is a New Zealand film. And the last man on earth wakes up and then runs into some other people. Uh, but it's a very strange film. Uh, I've just realized that it's also in the Upper Hudson Library system. So I was checking. Uh, but I highly recommend it. It's, it's, it looked like it was almost the start of a couple movie type thing, but never made it. But it is well done and is bizarre. Well, there's a lot of good ones out there that I really like a lot. Uh, I, I, I'm interested that you mentioned District 9. I kind of, I actually, when I started to watch the movie, I expected something very different from what it actually was. So, um, I don't know if I was a little disappointed because it wasn't what I wanted or it wasn't quite as good as I was hoping, so I'm not really sure. But at the same time, I do tend to enjoy the science fiction, novel, the science fiction movies that are more exploring some kind of human issue or something like that as opposed to science fiction to blow a lot of stuff up. Those are fun too, but, 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 but I like something that has a little bit of a deeper message in it. So, so District 9 was interesting. I'm actually very disappointed. I wanted to get a chance before this panel, which I didn't, to watch that movie Moon. Has anyone seen that? It's supposed to be good. It's, it, and, and not a lot of people have seen it, and it looks really good to me, and I really wanted to see it. I wish I saw it before this panel, but... Don't read anything about it. Before you see it, because it's one of these things where you think one thing and then 45 minutes in, you know, it's very ambitious and um, for the low budget. And there's a real story. It's not just two giant CGI robots hitting each other with Camaros. Yeah. <laughs> you know, actually, it reminds me of a uh, friend of mine, and I got to be in it for like 10 seconds. Um, locally made a movie on a micro budget. I think that's the actual term for a budget under $100,000. So it's called Uncivil Liberties. And it's slightly in the future. And it's the Patriot Act on Berserker. And it's a very interesting movie. I, I liked it very much. I thought one scene was a little bit long. Uh, but other than that, the thing held interest and it worked all the way through on the kind of thing of the uh, militias in revolt against the government for too much getting into your, you know, finding out where you are, doing things, tracking you, and being subversive, you know. But it's a very good film. And uh, you can get it on Amazon, I know that. But it went almost like straight, just basically the DVD. But uh, it's an interesting film. It's called Uncivil Liberties. Tom Mercer, the local uh, person, did the film. And it's a lot of fun to work on. Um, well. Keeping classic with films that may not have been critically rated well, but which I personally love and I share, I'm going to pick a Split Second with Rucker Howard, it's, um, which came out in the 90s. I think it was actually set in like 2007, 2008, so actually the future was predicting has already come. But it's set in a future where like global warming has taken over and like it's set in London and London has flooded itself, which is really interesting. The streets are flooded. It's very dark and depressing. Um, British film? <laughs> it's, you know, it's semi-British, actually. And Rutger Howard at the time, who was like on his way to becoming really fat, wore a trench coat for the whole movie to sort of hide the fact that he was like becoming larger. But I mean, it's the movie has like great lines in it, like you know, like we need bigger guns, big guns, you know, and like, you know, and, like he goes around, and he's like chocolate, chocolate. And it also indicates the conservation of sanity factor, which is a, a lot of things in buddy movies, where at the start. He's assigned a new partner who's like totally straight and totally everything. Meanwhile, Rucker Howard is like, he's clearly, he's gone way past psychotic break in his own land where he's like seeing things and having visions and like starts shooting his gun out at imaginary characters. And as the movie goes on, Rucker becomes more stable and his partner becomes more, he's like, chocolate, chocolate, coffee! <laughs> and at one point, they're talking to the captain, he's like, you want me to put out an APB on Satan? He's like, we had lunch with him. <laughs> it's the most awesome movie ever. It is it's a great movie. It's just, you have to see it. It's, it's, it's got some really cool things in there. 
And one of the things I love about it is like the more you watch it with, say, a few hard ciders, a few friends, you watch it, the details of the world are amazing. Like as you go up to the precinct and stuff like that, there'll be a poster in the background talking about like what to do when you've been bitten by a rat or plague precautions. Or like the little throwaway signs here that say like infected zone, do not enter and stuff like that that really make the details of the future that it's really rich and well imagined, as well as the fact that of course you have a giant creature that's, you know, in the tunnels and popping up and ripping people's hearts out, which is sort Sounds of good. the <laughs> essence of a good science fiction Sounds film. A little, like, really good. <laughs> Sounds a, a, a little bit like Peter Hamilton, some of his books, which again, he's British, he, uh, he did a, like a detective or a, a, an early, a near future series, and very dark, very, very dark approach to things. And I think that's somewhat of a British. And it's very much uh, it's very text. keeping British. <coughs> yeah. yeah. But it is, yeah. I mean, it, it was, it's awesome. It's, that's actually one thing I liked about Robocop was all the little details in the background, like the little commercials right. and the little throwaway kind of signs in the background. But they took themselves a little like too yeah. seriously. I mean, you really got the feeling with Split Second and stuff like that, they realized that, you know, where they were going, they were, it was just that camp touch. Yeah, that's true. Camp. Robocop was trying to be serious, but was camp. <laughs> but it was camp, yeah. You, you right. know when that goes along with that was uh, The Last Action Girl. Yeah. 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 I, I, that was a movie, you're right, that was a movie that everyone hated, but I... I I, I, love thought it was I love metafiction, and I I, 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 I feel the reason it is you had a teenage protagonist, so they, everybody thought it was a teen film, and then you had Arnie in there, so everybody thought it was an action film, and it was a, just simply a send-up of every bad trope in films, be it any kind of film. It wasn't just science fiction. Many I mean, you know, I'm retiring tomorrow. You know he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was. I thought it was. It was marvelous because just what it did on taking all the different sort of cliches out of Hollywood and putting them in this movie. It was marvelous. Yeah, I liked like coming to the real world. The guy says, "I can actually." The villain says, "I can actually succeed here." <laughs> <laughs> and and so, so, there was some of the funny stuff when they were when they were saying, "Why, why do you think that every every uh, phone number begins with five five five? What is?" <laughs> It, it was a movie that was actually, I was surprised at how uh, bad it got bad yeah. reviews, but uh, you know, I, it, it was it was a fun little parody and, and a lot of good stuff about you know the you, the the conventions and the cliches of the genre of the action film, you know, and the guys going up, I'm the hero, I'm the hero, and I, I'm not going to get killed, and he says, I'm the comedy sidekick, I can't get killed. <laughs> That what was um, uh, in Terminator, and they had who was um, who was it the uh, actor that uh, not Arnie, but in the inside internally in, in Last Action Hero was um, oh oh it's just the long oh, yeah. and, 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 and uh, Schwarzenegger's going oh, okay. I really love his acting. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's things like that you read. You go, oh, it, I, it, I really recommend the movie. If you find it, it's really worth uh, worth watching. I like science fiction with what I consider a lot of social commentary. Like I really love the darkness of Blade Runner, and I don't like the director's cut. I thought the director no. was a little crazy when he did that. And the unicorn scene, I'm sitting there going, okay, um, whatever. And I understood the symbol of the unicorn and everything, but I I just did not think it was necessary. What I really liked was his, I liked the talk over. I liked hearing what he was thinking. Right. And, um, and the scenes, uh, and for a world that is overcrowded and overpolluted and dark and rainy all the time, we had that a couple weeks ago. <laughs> so I'm sitting there going, okay, this looks, you know, it's nothing like getting sick and going to the clinic and everyone's wearing a mask. Really? And I was there going, oh my god, it's the stands for Stephen King. <laughs> yeah. you know? But you know, I think like Blade Runner, I had that same reaction too, and I kept trying to decide if I had seen the director's cut first, mm -hmm. would that have been a different experience? But I was so attached to the original movie and how it was, and I was I kept missing the things that I loved about it was in the director's cut. It's like you took away a part that I really liked and you added some stuff and I don't see the point of it. You know, I was like and then, you know, I came down to the issue and said, if I had seen the director's cut first, I don't think it would have been one of my top best movies of all time list. It would have been okay, but it wouldn't have been like the classic, 
For yes. for non seriousness, if you maybe you'd mention this, Men in Black, the first one, oh, which was I was thinking about that one. That's, that's, yeah. it, it, it's just <laughs> it's sci-fi comedy, yeah. right? It's it just it's just this. You, you look at it, and it's ver the nice thing about it was internally they're playing serious. Yes. Yeah. You know, which is always good, and and then sometimes you're going, this is every bad, push, you know, you, you know. I just loved it. I, I thought yeah, it was yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it is one of the better, yeah. 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 best combinations of science fiction yeah. and comedy around. The worm guys are great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hanging out in the coffee room. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it was we're okay. we're going to ask the audience. Do you have a question before does, we start? Does anybody else up here love Logan's Run? Yes. Oh, Logan, yes. that's love one that. of the classics. It, I can watch it over and over again. Mm -hmm. It may be afraid of turning 30. Fortunately, I'm not What was the Oh, yeah, yeah. I watched it on my 30th birthday. Uh, uh, time to come? In times to come. No, time, time, time to come. Time to come. Yeah. Times, maybe times to come. What? Shape of things to come. Shape of things to come. Things to come. Yeah. Just find things to come. You know, which, you know, just was like about four years, three years before World War II started. And of course, he start, has the, the blitz. In this movie, and everybody's going to say that's stupid. That'll never happen. You know, and I think it was the war was still going on in 1956 when they're fighting in Asia, which cracked me up. You know, just going on. But that, considering the time it was made and everything, was a marvelous film. It was really, uh, again, a social commentary, but at the same time, you know, whoa. Well, well, another movie, not science fiction, but in the fantasy, is Princess Bride. It has a lot of that eternal cliches and stuff that it doesn't take itself seriously. You know, mm -hmm. you know, don't get involved in the land war and in Asia. Never kill the death of the Sicilian. You know, yeah. and stuff like that. You know. so was, I, 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 another movie that came up when I mean, James mentioned YouTube because I was able to find it on YouTube. It was something I loved as a kid, and I've seen it and it's and I've seen it again. And I'm saying it's still as good as it used to be. It was something that was marketed in the U.S. as the fabulous world of Jules Verne. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was probably one of the most visually striking movies ever made because it was designed, it was done in black and white, it was designed to look like the illustrations of the time come to life. Uh, and if you, if, and it's, and it's uh, based upon some, uh, very, not a very well-known Jules Verne novel. It was done by a Czech director. And, and actually, the Czech title is the name of the movie. And it's actually the name of the book, or close to it, but it's like a dangerous, but it means the super weapon or something like that. Uh, but the the um, the story is, you know, it, it's and basically, if, if you want to see where cyberpunk, cy uh, not, uh, where uh, steampunk came from, <laughs> you, you can take a look at this movie. And, and these are all the styles, these are all the designs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was based on, I guess, the illustration from Jules Verne, but you have the giant airships going through the air. They have, they, they have uh, you know, the, these, these trains. They have, uh, you know, every, uh, sub the submarine, the Captain Nemo's type submarine, he's, uh, he's, he's not in it. But uh, it, it's a wonderful film, and I guess someone put the whole thing up on YouTube, so you can actually watch the film. Yeah, there are two, they're a little <laughs> different. One that I really enjoyed was Tank Girl. Oh yeah, Thank which you. was yeah. absolute yeah. fun. And, and some people didn't like it because of the inner thing of like the comic things, but it was it was it was just a fun thing. And what cracked me up was I think it was the only one in the audience who lost it when they do the Busby Bur Berkey routine Busby in the Berkey. bar in the middle of the desert, yes. the Australian desert. It starts with a couple of people starting to dance, and the next thing you know, you've got the camera going all the way up and you're watching 4,000 dancing girls doing s and circles and stuff. And and I, I was losing it. Everybody's going, why are you laughing? It's just a dance route. Never mind. Right now we're going to the audience to ask them what their science fiction favorite is. We're going to start down this end. <laughs> well, we were just talking about Minority Report. <laughs> Not Transformers? Come on, my goodness, I thought Optimus Prime. I'm going to tell. We'd be trained. But no, actually, one of my favorite ones is actually probably would be Flesh Fight and Sci Fi the more fantasy. It's probably Sixth Sense. I really like Sixth Sense. I didn't get it before the end. So when they revealed it at the end, which for me is. is 
you, you really have to pull it off to, to fool me. I usually know what's going on pretty fast in those movies. And for some reason, I just wasn't paying attention to this movie. I mean, obviously, after they reveal it, you go back and you're like, you know, how could I miss this? But, uh, but Sixth Sense was probably one of my favorite movies. His was my memory part. Does Jane even get to speak? No. <laughs> 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 Actually, I, almost all of the uh, Philip K. Dick uh, movie adaptions have been, they're all high on my list. And I think part of it is because what you were talking about with the, um, the social awareness and the, and the issues that people, you know, about cloning, whether you're looking at uh, tampering with someone's memory. But yeah, um, you know any any of the stuff from Bill Higgins, so the stuff like like under my heart report or uh, six day or no, what was it Arnold Schwarzenegger one ring? Oh, Total Recall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna mention one other. Uh, if anybody's ever seen Night of the Following Day, it's supposedly a kidnapping film, but when you get to the very end, you don't know if the whole thing's been a dream sequence. It's with uh, Marlon Brando, I think uh, Jack Palance, no, uh, who did have gun will travel? Um, Richard Boone. Richard Boone, he's a psychopathic killer. Uh, and you can understand uh, Brando, which made it very interesting. Uh, it's a bizarre <coughs> film, it's a really bizarre film. And when you get to the end, it's a reprise of the whole beginning, you know, where, the, where this girl is waking up from sleep. And you're wondering, is it a dream, or did that happen? And they did it for television, and they changed the ending and added a uh, somebody to tell you what really happened in the movie. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not real wonderful. Anyways, um, gentleman behind second row. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'm currently going through a uh, for the past year or so going through Buffy, which ah. I had never seen before, and uh, so that made me think of uh, Serenity, which is uh, oh, yes. one yes. of my yeah. favorites, and uh, the reason I like it, again, I think somebody mentioned that, uh, they like the uh, story, uh, stories that aren't just blowing things out, but have a relationship, so uh, both in Buffy and Serenity, I just like the relationships and the, the uh, random uh, Chinese thrown in, and, uh, the word shiny, I love that. And, so. I guess I like a lot of special effects. I, I think like uh, Star Trek, uh, Star Wars, uh, Abyss. Mm. I don't know what I thought of that. I can't remember. The Abyss was awesome. Yeah. Now for the that worst cool. one, try the course. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, people, there are things yeah, that are People are diss the core all the time. I like but it. I love Mr. Rat. Maybe because I, in my day job I'm a webmaster. Yeah, well, no, there are individual things were cool. But, <laughs> but no, I, I, the core, I like the core. Core was fun. It was yes. a stupid concept. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the news, Newsday used to have this, this review for a movie that says, buy the concept, buy the flick. And that's what it is. You buy, buy the pres yeah. premise, you buy the flick. Yeah. You know, you, you, if you don't, if the premise is, if you want to deal with the reality of it, you don't want to go into the movie. <laughs> but if you're going to take in and say, okay, let's buy the premise, let's, yeah. then the movie's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're you're yeah. turn. Yeah. Sorry. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. <laughs> no, your turn. Your turn. I'm whispering things in my ear and I'm choking in my brain. So. <laughs> well, whispering in my ear. I'm just thinking of some older movies with uh, Charlton Heston, uh, of course, Coil and Green is right there. Oh, yeah. and, um, Spoiler alert. The Omega, <laughs> Man, really the Omega Man was a real low cat. I don't know if anybody's ever even heard of it. Oh, yeah. 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 Yes, those are a couple of the oldies. My favorite science fiction picture for about five minutes was AI artificial intelligence in the law. And after further reflection, I had a screen problem with the logic in the third act. So I went back to my previous favorite movie, um, Contact, starring Jodie Foster and Matthew Cummings. That, 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 that was very good. Awesome. Yeah.
that was free. A lot of people hated it, but I thought it was excellent. I thought it was like the really kind of the core of what a good sci-fi well, movie is. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the science work. Yeah. What a concept. And it, it wasn't dumbed down for you. I mean, you really yes. made the audience yes. think. Yes. You, you respected the audience. Yes, it's really a thinking person's movie. And, 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 and the irony of the ending was wonderful. Oh, yes. yes. That, that was wonderfully ironic endings. I mean, that, that was perfect. And, you know, it, it really, you know, I mean, and of course, Jodie Foster did great, you know, as well as, you know, as an actor. And of course, Samantha McDonald's was interesting, too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't help. You know, they're pretty. That's not hurt at all, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I really like that. And yeah, of course, Carl Sagan is a hero of mine anyway, so yeah. win, win. Yeah. Yeah. And, But it was also one of those things when they said, announced they were making it, I'm like, uh, you know, you're like, you know, like, yeah, you're ready. Like, yeah, this is how it's going to be. Well, that was that was fabulous. Twelve months. Twelve months. Oh, I love twelve months.
But I, I, I'm, another, I liked Independence Day a lot too, and actually one reason why I liked it is because it was like a um, homage to the old black and white 50s sci-fi movies. Yeah. Where it's like the scientists and the US military get together and they yeah. save the day. <laughs> I love Brett Spinner. Oh, it was so yeah. remarkable. They don't let us out much. I'm going to reply to that post. I can see that. <laughs> Next, I have another one. Dark City. Yes. I love yes. Dark City. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I love me some Dark City. <laughs> yeah. A very underrated movie. Oh, I don't know. It, why it, 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 the problem is it, it basically. Uh, well, when The Matrix came along, which is basically the same movie, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that suddenly everyone was, it had flashier effects and everyone heard The Matrix. And then we talk about Dark City, and nobody's seen it. And it they has, actually shot The Matrix on the set of the Dark City. But it has such creepy villains. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really oh, yeah. Did, did, uh, did you guys mention Tron? Not yet. No. No. Oh, okay. Because that was fun. Yeah. And that was what, but in the 80s? Yeah, that was the yeah. 80s. It was really early for special effects and stuff. And it was really... No, it was early 80s. Yeah. I was in Disney Yeah, and it was a really neat yeah. concept. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it was a really neat yeah. concept, you know, of ending up in a game type of thing. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and it was it was really cool. And, you know, I think it was a little bit too far off for, for a lot of people. You know, well, you could never get into a game. I mean, you know, people were still doing... You know, uh, oh, Pong. 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 Yeah. 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 I was in college. We had Galaga. We had, you know, we had like asteroids. I was like a Galaga <laughs> champ. You know, I could keep down. Yeah. Have you seen the Tron sequel? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. The, uh, the the bike race for the sequel. Yeah. That was a, you gotta see it. Got made. No, no, it's, it's coming out. It's yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Then. Do you yeah. have a question? I just wanted to. Uh, there's a, a movie that I saw recently that was reminding me of Dark City, but there's no movie I've ever seen. And it was called Gabriel. It was uh, set in uh, kind of a really dark city, <laughs> but uh, but it's not, it, the city is purgatory, and the archangels are being sent down to purgatory to try and win the lost souls over uh, so they can go to heaven. But the uh, uh, the Fallen are also there, and they're trying to win over this dark city. And it's very, it's a really dark story, and, and the angels slowly lose their power or their connection to heaven, and, and so it's, it's, it reminded me of Dark City. Like I was, it was like palpable feeling. That was amazing. That's actually kind of like there's there's these two Russian movies that they kind of go together, uh, Night Watch and Day Watch. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes, and they're they're very okay. This and the uh, yes. Last Watch. There's not okay. Oh, is that oh, there's there's a, a trilogy? Oh, okay. Did they make Last Watch? Oh, yeah. Um, I'll split it up in half. Like recent, vintage, and, and later. My, I'm a friend of um, this guy who does a sci-fi radio show in Stony Brook called Destinies. I'm his webmaster, and every year at the end, at, in January, we do like the best films of 08 or 07 or whatever. And we usually just stick to blockbusters. So that's where the show skews. So um, I try to see as many films as possible. <laughs> during the year, and, and the, the recent ones that I really, really liked this year, I really like Watchmen. I really liked um, District 9, and even though my friends on the show eviscerated it, I kind of got a big kick out of Star Trek, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just put on my pointy years, you know, and, you know, I was like, I don't really care about the quote-unquote logic or why he's meeting Spock on the ice planet, because it always has to be an ice planet. I just liked him saying, you have been and always been my friend, and I just melted onto the floor, and I didn't really care about it. Just get those two together alone for five minutes, and that's all I really wanted. And then the classics, you guys had said a lot, were um, Contact, Dark City. Like the, uh, the theatrical for Dark City, better than the director's cut, I both. And I watched the director's, you know, they just got, came out again, and um, didn't like it as much as the theatrical release. No, which, the, 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 as long as you turn down the narration at the first five minutes. Seconds yeah. That narration, the, the narration kills the film. I, the whole thing sort of plays totally different it. for me. Yeah, turn the sound off. I also okay. think Dark City has one of the best scores mm -hmm. I've ever heard. Oh, and I also really dug um, for gooey, goofy, greasy, bloody fun was Drag Me to Hell. Oh was, yeah. Was a lot of <laughs> a lot of goofy, wild fun. And uh, don't throw anything at me, oh, but I really sorry. enjoyed Spielberg's War of the Worlds. It really sort of like stayed with me. I had problems with the logic in that too. <laughs> you know what it is? I just liked the way it looked, and you know that it, it scared me. But yeah, the logic. Was that the one with Tom Cruise? 
Yeah, I really liked it. That's an ass thing on the back. The only one. The kid, the kid. Was the kid was great. That's the dawn. That was fun. Oh, that was yeah. fun. Yeah. Great Tarantino oh. vampire movie. <laughs> Was that Tarantino? Yeah. Yes. yes. Oh okay. God, that's good. That was that was that was wonderful. You're remembering Selma Hayek in that movie. Pardon? The vampire that dances with the python snake. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I gotta throw Hellboy too out there too for the Barry Manilow song. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's a lady in the photograph. Um, it's kind of hard, but I I go back to the day the Earth stood still. Ooh, yes. I haven't seen the remake. I haven't dared to. The classic. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's yeah. You know, because they put a different spin on it. The right? original is classic. Yeah, the Keanu Reeves version I haven't seen yet. We're saving that for the DVD night with the uh, Hard Lemonade Society. Yeah. <laughs> Buy a lot. Yeah. But yeah, Keanu Reeves. I mean, that in itself is just so awesomely bad Whoa. to begin with. It's gonna be, it's gonna be like yeah. But you won't be able to the original movie. Really okay. didn't have any space. They didn't have any battles. It was all cerebral. It was all cerebral. Really, I mean, yeah, they, they, they have the image of this. Now, if you want the battles, battles, you need Plan 9 from our Plan 9. Yes. Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, my God. Are they doing a remake of that? Yes, they are. <laughs> they are doing a remake of that. Again, you can improve it, but you can't make it better. There's some that you must just preserve and quietly put <laughs> so it's me. Uh, lady far in the back? No, 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 no. No? Okay. I, I'm, I'm, fine. I'm just laughing at what you said. I was just thinking, um, we were talking about Dark City and Proyas. Um, I was really disappointed in Knowing, um, which was directed by the guy who did uh, Dark City, and it kind of fell apart for me. And it was the images, the imagery of the movie with the plane crashes and all these things happening, but it just Really, which one was this? Knowing, knowing. Nick knowing. Nolte. Oh, knowing. It's really bothered me. Um, the, the the way the story hung together right. really, that really annoyed me. Yeah, yeah, that was. See, that had one of the one of the silliest lines I've ever heard in film, and it's in the trailer. Uh, the son said, "I'm afraid I'm going to die," and the father says, "I'll never let that happen." Yeah. He's promising immortality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not a vampire film. No, no, no. no, no. 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 It was sort of interesting. I mean. And then, of course, the ending of that was like they were, you know, we're all being down to the happy plants. And you're just like, you know, like, I'm just waiting for, like, you know, like, unicorns to come out and meadows and greet the children as they arrive. It was like, I think Care Bears live here. I'm pretty sure that's where they've been relocated. I remember that. Yeah. 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 I just stood there and, and I, sat, well, I sat there with my husband and I went, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What movie is it? Which no, I, no, no, it's not the summer. I saw it with Josh. Yeah, the, the ending was, I mean, there was parts of it that was sort of interesting as it was unfolding. It was some, and it was a really interesting thought, like, now I spoil it, but if you did know, like, how would that change how you lived your life? You know, sort of like, you know, like, say, like, those people believe 2012 is significant, like, you know, as you get up to D-Day, what happens when you get up to that number? Like, you know, how does that change your behavior? You know, like, what does that do to you? Of course, I saw the, I must admit, I was in the movie theater with Josh, and I saw the preview for 2012. It looks great. And I'm like, I'm like, why are they advertising a movie that's not going to be out for three years? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, you are too stupid to live. <laughs> 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 it's cool, but it's not going to be out for so three years. So why is there a trailer? What, what did you say when you saw the trailer in 2001? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm a bit confused, yes. Okay. Gentlemen in the back. Okay, um, I do a weekly show, I show bad, well, old movies, <laughs> but I show good movies too, and this week I showed um, When Worlds Collide, which was a pretty okay. decent movie, and then I also get into showing stuff like Kiss versus a Phantom of the Park, <laughs> <laughs> you know, for Halloween, so, they're, it's they're, classics, it's, it's a classic, it's got Kiss, <laughs> you know, and it's a bad superhero movie, and they've done a lot of bad superhero movies. So you just have to put that one in there too. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't put Hancock? <laughs> oh, Hancock was cool. Oh, Hancock was fun. Yeah. That, that was awesome. There's there's Hancock, they're working on Hancock too. Oh, really? well, yeah. Yeah. Actually, what I liked about Hancock a lot is from the previews and all that, I expected to go, let's see a, a fun uh, um, superhero spoof movie. Is totally what I expected. Mystery and then, and, What's that? Mystery Man. A Mystery Man too. Yeah. But, then, but then Hancock actually had a little something deeper to it too. So I thought that was kind of neat. It's like a little extra gift surprise in there. Just need to be a little bit longer. I could have I could have said another 15, 20 minutes in Hancock. You know, it's just a little too short for me. Has anybody seen Cloak and Dagger? Was that an old movie? Oh, oh, that's by Anthony Coleman. I guess it's yeah, set in Austin, I believe. And it, it it's it's sort of 
the imagination is the, these two kids are like 11 and 12 watch see a murder and the whole thing is they're trying to avoid it and it's it, it, there's a lot there's a fantasy aspect to it but it's just very well done and I can see why it was it fell in the middle of genres because here you got some 11 and 12 year old protagonists but it's an international murder <laughs> movie at the same time and the um, you know the the, the 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 scene it's really well done and I you know uh, but it was one of these that oh it's you know, both sides sort of, you know, well, it's not a kid's movie, but you got kids in it, and it's not a murder flick because you got kids in it or something like that, and, and, and it disappears. I think sometimes that's confusing with parents, especially when they advertise it on television. You think that if there's kids in it, and if they show a certain section of the movie, and it's a kid's film, and sometimes you can go and then go to the movie and say, this is not a kid's film. That was the way Watchmen were. Yeah. They had, there were kids at Watchmen because... No. They thought it was a superhero movie. It's a comic book movie. It's a superhero movie because you know you had you had Hulk, you had Iron Man, you had X Men, Watchmen, <laughs> another comic book movie. And it was like, no, it wasn't. No, 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 no. If you read the graphic novel, no. No, but they didn't, they, they never read the graphic. They were just the general public. It's, it's another superhero movie. Was that graphic novel for that one? Yeah, but they re-released the years ago. Oh, for superheroes, the Incredibles. Yeah, oh, right. That was so good. You know, you know what? The Incredibles was my favorite Fantastic Four movie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like Violet. I like Violet. Jack Jack wasn't too bad either. So the Fantastic Four without the science. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, watch any of the other. If you watch Fantastic Four movies, The Incredibles was a much better Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, they yes. weren't that good. They, exactly. they, they weren't good. But Brad Bird, who directed The Incredibles, also did The Iron Giant. Yes, yes. yes. Right. 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 One of the great, great animated yeah. films of all time. Well, we talk about Watchmen and and kids before. I'll I'll, I'll quote um, Milhouse from The Simpsons. Mr. Moore, could you sign my copy of, Wa of uh, Watchmen Babies? <laughs> <laughs> seeing the movie before reading the books. I like the original Doom movie. Because, uh, I, you know, I, then I read the books, I go, oh, now I understand why nobody likes the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, um, the first Trancers movie was one of my, uh, just a, a fun movie. The first which one? Trancers. Yeah. It's, a, it's a kind of obscure one, but it was awesome. No, weren't there like three or four of those? There are only like eight of them. There's like 20 of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 left, yeah, like I stopped at like three or four. Yeah. Um, Max? Well, pass on me because I can't remember the name of that. Oh, okay. Describe it. Describe it. it. So you know, last it. year where the guy goes, um, he has a house and, he, and next door to him there's this uh, building and he goes inside and there's a, a, a time machine. No, 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 no. There's only like four people in my movie as a foreign film. And he goes and then he then he sets in all these events, bad things happen, so he has to go in the future like three times to, to fix what he did. So you see it all from his perspective from different angles. From different points in time because you see how different things happen. It's actually a really good movie. But I can't the only thing that keeps sticking in my head is the one I rented right after that was left the bike. That was a You know what? We'll think of a story. You know who started it? No, there was four and they were all yeah. foreign. Those foreign films. Yeah. Exactly. Next. Um, probably, there's so many, but probably one of my favorite is Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yes. My kids got me the, I still have my VHS and I still would watch it if I had my tape player with them. <laughs> and you can still buy a tape player for a little I, while. I really <laughs> <laughs> got 25 but, and bucks I Ghostbusters got on the fun side. Uh, I took my brother, I took my brother to see that and I can, when he was a kid and I can still watch that. And the new one is coming out. And yeah. 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 new yeah. Ghostbusters? Yeah. The yeah. original oh. Star Oh, this, this is like is totally awesome. Really? I, so I knew they were making like a, um, instead of a movie, they were basically making Ghostbusters 3 into a, in, into a video game. No, there's the, the movie, with the no, original they, actors. no, the original actors are now a movie that got, oh, they wow. announced it wasn't a video game on the Commodore 64, I had it. Have you heard of Ernie Hudson? I have the new video. Yeah. 
I but think he said that they said they had everybody. So I mean, good. I mean, you know, you know, like I mean, so I don't know. Last I had seen the old, old. Um, that's all I, I was thinking. She's still alive. She's still alive. I, still I, still alive. Alive. <laughs> I just love the guy in the rubber suit. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they don't destroy New York either. They have Tokyo, which yeah. has all these, all these all rings right. of high tension power lines. I was working at a, a GE and they were talking about this plant in Tokyo. And I said, oh, what the power lines yeah. stop Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> they always, every, every one they say, oh, he'll run into the power lines. That'll stop him. Does that mean Godzilla was stupid? Never stop. Never said Godzilla's a good No, no, I didn't say that. It doesn't even slow him up. It's a Japanese defense. It's never worked. 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 As far as a, a very campy movie, not necessarily science fiction, was cute. With David Carradine, with the, oh, the monster, yeah, Quasi Cotto, where yeah. he was living in the top. Oh man! We talked about a movie that you have to see with a lot of hard Saturday. You know. <laughs> <laughs> there might be. We have a question. Oh, yes. another foreign film, The Host. Yes. The Host. Brilliant. Oh, it's very scary. It's oh. great. A Korean Cloverfield. And it's caused by American scientists. Always. Remind me that because I saw it. Goes without saying. Where's number one? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
very steampunk. Nine in the digit, not nine in the N-I-N-E. This is a different movie. Yeah. It's still in the digit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Wally was interesting. Mm -hmm. Wally was great. Huge. I like Monsters vs. Aliens. That, was that wasn't bad. That was classic. Oh, yes, that was marvelous. That was better than I expected. I've seen it three times since it came out on DVD. Yeah. That, that, that was fun. Do you have a question over here? Also, like, uh, Buck Rubani. Twice or three times. Oh, God. Uh, yes. <laughs> good old Buck Rubani. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that was the end. Anybody remember when we were talking about stuff? Which is like yeah. like the mob, but yeah. with Oreo filling yeah. instead. Yeah. 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 It was like cool. It was cool. It was like cool. It was like cool. It was like cool. Completely on over it. Yes. <laughs> well, one offbeat um, film that I saw in college was Repo Man, which is uh, pretty cool. That's that, that's a real terrific film. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Saw that in Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. Yeah, <laughs> a Repo Man is good. Is is, is I mean, uh, uh, yeah. they're supposed to be making a second one of that. Oh, I know. Really? Yeah, you really like the Red I mean, they're 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 a great. Mo the the thing that really got me with Repo Man is when they tell when they mention the Repo Man's code. Yeah. It's been a long the time. Repo Man's code is. Uh, 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 no Repo Man shall damage a car or through an action. Allow a car to have a See, this is your only audience that can get that joke. There's a little I love that joke. Well, I'm going to ask the panel. We have a few minutes left. Um, lots of times it's the acting that makes or breaks. Sounds good. Because sometimes you have unknown actors and they're just great. And the story is just great and it comes off. Sometimes you have unknown actors and it fails miserably, even if the story premise was a really good story. So who would you say would be, I want an actor and actress, uh, Wanda, the best actor and actress in science fiction film? <laughs> you know, the, the, uh one of the things that I found was the casting for like Lord of the Rings because you, you had a couple big names in there, but a number of the actors, uh, at least I'm not that wasn't that familiar with them. Like Vigo was the last one to replace him. Yeah, he was marvelous at, at, as an Aragorn, and Sean Bean, Boromir, and and then Miranda Otto, who was finally being on, on this side of the Pacific. Uh, was basically, you know, well known in Australia, and that was it. And her turn, uh, turn uh, and even Orlando Bloom, who was, you know, he's like 19, straight out of acting school or something, and uh, it was, it was just a yeah. very good ens ensemble cast. Uh, there were a couple big names, and everybody else was sort of just fitted in, and it, it worked. It, it worked very, very well. Well, if I pick an actor, I think uh, the one I, I'll go with is Bruce Willis. Because he's made a very good, uh, some very good science fiction. Uh, Twelve Monkeys, he's very fifth element. Um, he, he, he's, he's very, uh, he, he, the science fiction films have always been, actually, he's much better as a, in the science fiction films than he is in his action films. Which he usually, What's the one who's just in? Uh, just, yeah. I just Surrogates? Like Surrogates. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I haven't very seen that yet, but I mean, very the point is, Willis's is, Willis is best work is always in science fiction. I, I kind of like Bruce Willis a lot, too, because he does, he can do different genres also, and some better than others, but he can do different genres. And, and one, another one I got for, for, for the men that I actually find a really good actor overall, which kind of surprised me at first, is... Um, 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 Will Smith. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and as, 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 a, as a female actress, I gotta say, probably Sigourney Weaver. Oh, she's yeah. amazing. Can I interrupt one second? The movie's called Time Crimes. Uh, the one you found. Yes. Yes. Ah, Time yes. Crimes. Yes. And the Very other movie busy. I forgot to mention that I saw on my Netflix uh, was, was Fanboy. Oh, oh yeah. brilliant. That was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> pretty good. That's the only one that was. Yes. Yeah. I love you. I know. <laughs> 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 
The, the only problem was the fans at the convention were too thin. I loved him as a better drama. Um, and actually, I was going to say, Nick's still almost the actress. I, mean, you know, I either go for pretty, pretty boys without a plot, or I'll go to see um, Ship Blow Up. In that case, I'm looking for robots. I like Transformers. I want giant robots. I want robots in my life. So. Yeah, Lost in Space. Yeah. I'm like, if, if there's like robots, you know, the new Transformers movies, there was a scene with robots and camels in the desert. I'm like, this is awesome. This is all I need to make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> movie with the with the hamsters oh my god I hated that I I wanted I wanted to poke my eyes out I took my daughter to see that thing